How the heck are you, everybody? I'm Fastidious. This is truly ridiculous. This is the first of what I think will be two just lunacy level summoning weekends for the anniversary in Wandrum Realms. But holy crap, I mean, this weekend we are going to see summoning like we have never seen before. We are going to have the start of a shard summoning event. So the Helga Fusion shard summoning, collecting fragments of Helga, that will begin in conjunction with three banners that I think most people, I'd really say large amounts of people, will be pulling on. I will be pulling on all three of these banners. I don't think there's ever been a time ever that I've pulled on three banners in one weekend. Maybe there was another instance with a limited hero, pity manipulation, a little bit of that, and then some ancients. But I'm going all out, all in on three different banners, and we're having the start of Helga. So if you don't know, we are getting on both rare summoning crystals and legendary divine summoning crystals, we are getting a 2x by 15x. They're calling it Frostborn. That's the, the name, Frostborn Invocation of Spirits, Frostborn Divine Summoning. I don't know if I think Frostborn's a good name for what's going on here. Sure, it's got a frosty hero in Boreas, but then we've got Lucius and Ares, we've got Deimos. This is gonna be a 2x rate on your chances to get legendary heroes. And then when you hit legendary, you're gonna have a 15x rate up on these three. Two new heroes, Lucius, who is gonna be game breaking for Guild Boss 2. I'll have a guide on him later in the week. I cannot wait to show you guys how fun and how exciting he is. Then we got Ares, who actually also could be a really nice kind of like debuffer, support, utility, tank fighter for the Nightmares. Can fit really nicely into a Guild Boss 2 Nightmare comp. Uh, so if I picked him up, I probably would use him. I think, let's just check those base stats. We're gonna go do deep on, yeah, I mean, look at those base stats. The defense is bad, but you get something pretty cool going there. And then Boreas, I mean, he is not the total god he used to be, but it's not like he isn't like a solid S tier mage. He's an AoE mage, especially for people progressing in the game. This is very exciting. This banner is Looney Tunes. Then we've got Anora with Idril. They paired Idril with her, and like a top five epic in the whole game. That's very exciting, again, especially for new players. And then, the one thing you can't see, and this is where we're gonna probably have to take a breath, because oh my god, it's so much. If we go over here to the event notice, you can see part one of the gala events. They tell us about the Frostborn summoning, I just told you. They tell us about Anora, I just told you. But look at that, now confirmed, and this is going Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's just all happening, bang, bang, bang. We are getting 15x on Ancient Summoning on two Lord Heroes. We're getting Valderon, Ancient Exclusive, Ridiculous Fighter, my third most wanted hero in the game, probably, maybe second, uh, Chaotic Lord, and then we're getting our second unnameable ever. All those unnameables are considered Lords. This is gonna be an Ancient Exclusive unnameable, Ymerit, who has a crazy bond skill with Anora. So much to break down. This is going to be a weekend probably like we've never seen before in Watcher Realms. Let's get into it. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty, my friends, here is the vision. Alright, I'm standing up, baby. We're at the standing desk. There's just too much to talk about. We're just going to go in on these banners. I'm going to tell you when they're happening. I'm going to tell you any funkiness in them. And then I'm going to very quickly review all the heroes. Just like quick hits, everything you need to know on uh, when it comes to like what we're looking at, who that hero is. So if we look over here, beginning already on June the 27th, that is three days from now, that is Thursday. We I don't think we've ever seen a limited 250 exclusive guaranteed hero arrive on a Thursday. That's what's happening here. We are getting the legendary Anora coming to the game. She's a cultist and an esotericist. She cannot be really buffed or debuffed. So a little bit of a pro and con there situation. And she's a crazy summoner. There's no real need for summoning in the game, but she's got good solid magic DPS, uh, lots of summoning. She is, I think, the hottest hero in the game. Uh, so if you're into that, you should definitely pull. But a very exciting 250 guaranteed exclusive hero. I think you're gonna wanna hop on it because they're they're like allowing these 250 exclusives to shine. You know, they, they, they introduce content that they're gonna shine in and I think that will happen for her. However, there's a lot of stuff. So unless you don't have a ton of summons, maybe you take Thursday off and then look at that on Friday, this is gonna kick off for all the way until July the 1st. So let me check, that's to Monday. So from Friday to Monday, and this one I will tell you is also from Thursday to Monday. Uh, this is crazy. So this is, as I said, a 2x on your chance to get a legendary hero. And then if you hit legendary, it's a 15x rate, rate up on these three. Lucius, who I think is the star of the banner. He's gonna be a watcher marksman, but most importantly, he is just tremendous for Guild Boss 2. More on that in a second. If you get him awaken level three, he goes from like one of the best Guild Boss 2 heroes in the game to truly transcendent god, especially if you're not counting like crazy lords and ancient exclusives. I mean, he is ridiculous. Ares is gonna be a lot of fun. Boreas we know a lot about. 
This is uh, really cool stuff. You can see that all legendary heroes have a two times rate, and then there's a 15 times original rate on the rate up heroes. Actually, we have to talk about the epics because they're all relevant. Dimos is the, tying for the rarest epic in the game. He's not, there's not so much he brings to the kit besides DPS, but when it comes to wanting like an epic fighter, an epic nightmare, just an epic DPS, he's about as good as you're gonna find. He's just very solid. He's actually pretty easy to build. He can absolutely slap. He's gonna help a lot of people in Guild Boss 2 and some new content stuff where you need melee units. He's, he can work in Void Rift. He's a nice progression hero. He's good in Guild Boss 1 as well. Cool hero. Then Harpoon sucks, right? But if you're a new player, and there are a lot of new players coming to Watch of Realms, hello. If you're new, let me know in the comments. Say hi. Uh, there are, guys. It's, the game's hot right now. The game is piping hot. Uh, Harpoon is needed for the Abomination Fusion, and Abomination's, you know, gets a bad rap, I think, because he's free. He's a very good hero. I still use him every week, right? He's really good in Void Rift. He's really good in Conquer. He's really good in a lot of different things. Tremendous for progression. And then we've got Nasandai, who is the most underrated healer in the game. Sure, she doesn't do that much more than healing. She brings some nice attack speed buffing, but the heals are huge. She's amazing, amazing in the Golem, the healer codex. Very cool banner. I think every single hero on this banner is a hit. For me personally, I don't need Boreas. I don't use him kind of out of protest, but I have A3 Boreas. I don't want more copies. I want Lucius, and then if I don't get Lucius, I wouldn't mind a little Ares. Or, you know, Moonton, throw me a couple Lords, right? I really think I've got the worst Lord luck in the realm. Over 9,000 summons. Been playing since the game started, basically. Only three Lords. Only ever pulled four. Two of them are King Hearts, who some people would say is the worst Lord in the game. I wouldn't say that. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. Not too fun. And then, so it's going Thursday, we get Anora. Friday, we get the 2x by 15x and all this craziness. Boreas, Lucius, Ares, Dimas, Harpoon, and Nasandai. And then Saturday. I've been wait I've been talking about a Valoran 15x for as long as I've been I came out of the womb, just mumbling to myself, Valoran and 15x. No one knew what I was talking about. 29 short years later, a game called Watcher of Realms came out, but there still wasn't a character called Valderon. Then about half a year after that. We had him come to Forerunner, then there were mumblings, rumorings, moomerings, mammerings. He finally made it to Global, but no 15x. I haven't gotten him at long last. He has arrived. The subject of my April Fool's joke, I would love to get him. Wow, you have still got a mighty fine chance to get your merit, who we're going to talk about in a second, is bonkers crazy good. He is so good. Uh, he's better than Ajax. He's the best unnameable in the game now. He's got a crazy bond skill with Anora. So, you know, if you're like me and you know you're definitely going to be pulling on Anora, she's going to be a lot better, her bond skill, when you get your merit, then he's going to be a lot better, his bond skill, when you have Anora. So that's a crazy pairing. And this also will last till the end of Monday, July 1st. They'll probably give us, I'm guessing, two or three days to exhale and then start and ride back up on the 5th or the 6th and we actually hit that anniversary. You know Praetis is coming. You know Jira's coming. And you know they probably have something else up their sleeve. It is Looney Tunes time in Watch of Realms. So let's talk about these heroes. By the way, we got to mention four of these are brand spanking new. Anora, Curse Cult, Nesotericus Mage, Lucius, a Watchguard Marksman, Ares, a Nightmare Council Fighter. Uh, he's actually been on Forerunner forever, but hey, he's new to us. All the other guys are brand spanking new right out of the box. And then you merit crazy, crazy, unnameable fighter. So good. And he's got that cool new unnameable bonus, right? The 4% damage boost in all battles, and then it goes up to 6% if you can get him A2. Let's talk about these actual heroes. So I actually don't have to be on test server right now. This is my account. I can just head right in because they've loaded in all, all the information on these heroes already. This is how you can see it. So we'll start with Anora. Like I said, I'm not doing full kit breakdowns or anything. We're doing quick hit overviews. Basically, Anora does very solid damage. Her base stats are fine, nothing too crazy. I mean, the attack's high, but we're starting to see higher and higher from the mages. Really solid, nice DPS, magic DPS from a mage. She's in like the two most common mage factions. At first, it said she was gonna be cultist and northerner. I think that made her more exciting, but still cool. She's gonna synergize really well with these factions. Um, she has Labor. This is the guy she summons. I think if I click here, no, they're not showing me the ultimate animation on Global yet. But yeah, she summons this kind of dragony guy, Labor. It's very cool. Uh, and she synergizes beautifully with other summoning units. So if we go over here to her second passive, Agitation, when on the battlefield, increases the attack of Labor by 10% and grants damage increase to other allied summons. That is just a really, really nice thing that allows her to synergize beautifully with other summoners on your team. The Esotericist uh, faction membership is really nice because you do have some kind of summoning units there. 
with Cyrus, with Navros. I'm sure there's more to come. And then also the second line in her talent, Labor's gonna gain one stack of Ancient Spirit, stacking up to 15 times upon the death of any allied summons. So you know, if you've got like Kriya summoning her crows when those guys die, I think that will count. We'll have to test it out. She hasn't been working on test server yet. Obviously she'll be working soon. You know, Navros, his summons when they die. The skeletons, the warriors and the fighters, I think that's what you call it. The warriors and the fighters that Cyrus brings when those die. I mean, when you get up to 15 stacks, right? Ancient spirits worth 1% attack, that's post deployment. All the big damage is kind of coming from labor and then labor right alongside Anora. It's gonna be a cool thing. So I think she's the kind of hero, she's really unique. You could see them adding like a summoner codex. Sorry, I'm just looking at something really quick here. Yeah, we're gonna push for the tush. Uh, she's a beautiful hero, guys. You got it, you gotta go for it. I think if you have the resources to do so. However, if you don't, I won't really blame you. Let's quickly talk about Idril. Uh, fantastic, fantastic epic. A lot of you probably already have her, but for new players, she is a top five epic in the entire game. She's the best, I would say, epic DPS. It's her or Maul. For me, she's probably the best epic DPS in the game. Her ultimate is ridiculous. Her range becomes the entire map. If you get her A5, every time she gets a kill, she's gonna extend the duration of that ultimate and that limitless range for three seconds. And then she's got this cool effect that while she's ulting, when an ally doesn't ult, she gets this crazy, crazy boosted damage. And she's nuts. She's not essential for Gear Raid 3, cause yeah, you could do it without her. But for all intents and purposes, she is. She is bonkers. No one would ever not use her. If you've got her, you're going to use her. She's completely... For Gear 3, she's triple S tier. Absolute goddess. And she's just good in a lot of stuff. She really is. She hits really hard. Uh, I love this passive. I love using this strategically. It's a fun thing. It's very hands-on. Uh, and like things like Voidrift as well. She's just brilliant. All right, let's go now to the Frostborn. Is this a mistake? The first time Boreas was on a 2x by 15x... It was wintry, right? It was like him, Setrum, and dang, and Orum, right? That was for Christmas. It was the week before Christmas. And like, yeah, Frostborn makes sense, right? This doesn't make sense. They also were pairing Setrum with like a themed frosty skin. Probably my favorite skin in the game to this day. It looks so freaking cool. You have to get top 50 on the summoner leaderboard. So that wasn't going to happen for years truly. But what is this Frostborn? I mean, it's, it's the start of July, end of June, start of July. Hot, hot, hot. I guess maybe... If you're in like Brazil or somewhere in Australia, somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, sure, maybe it's a little frosty right now, but no, that's not what they're doing here. Uh, we're an American, European, Asian player base. We're all north of the equator. Doesn't make sense. He's the one frosty unit. Maybe they're underrating how hyped we are for Lucius, and to them, this is just the Boreas banner. Kind of makes sense since they put his picture there. I think they're wrong. For a lot of people, Boreas might be the ultimate prize, but for a lot of us, it's going to be probably the other two and definitely Lucius. Oh my God. So let's go really quick. Boreas was nerfed. He doesn't hit as crazily as before, but he's still got really nice freeze. As long as it's not some of this newer like gear dungeon content, gear eight four, gear eight five, where you can't have too much freezing going on. As long as he can still get freezes out and you have room in your comp to get other freeze heroes, the guy can absolutely pop off. So I'm talking like Void Rift, gear eight one, I think he's still like the best hero in the game after Demi probably. Crazy stuff, this Eternal Ice Haven is truly massive damage. Uh, it's just really, really good. He's got anti-healing, he's got DPS, he's got freeze, so you got crowd control, obviously, in, in that freeze. Very, very strong hero. Uh, he was completely broken, goaded, amazing for Arena. Now he's just, like, good, so I get why the hype has died down, but he's still good, right? He's definitely still good. Boreas is cool. Awakenings are really nice. His A1 is kind of enormous. If you have Boreas and you like using him, when you get A1, getting the trigger chance of his talent to land those freezes on any attack from 10% to 50 during the ultimate. So a 50-50 coin flip during the ultimate is amazing. And then his A3 plus 50% on the frozen purification damage. This is a big, big source of his damage. So yeah, yeah, he's a good hero. Lucius, this is who we should talk the most about. Let me put the mic down. I'll I'll lean over. We'll 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 focus on this specifically for Guild Boss too. I mean, my God, he's got good damage. He has these his pursuits. He has his damnation stacks, and then he gets demonic embrace. It's kind of like a secondary ultimate. Basically, it's saying, hey, damage is happening, and then damage is happening. Cool. He's a DPS. What makes him so so special? Well, if we look on the ultimate over here, on top of all the damage when the ultimate is triggered, now basic attacks and his pursuits are going to deal extra damage. But key thing, his pursuit will have a 4% chance to dispel one buff from the target. It's not much, right? It's 4%. But my god, it's something. You get this guy going nice and quick. He's got that 2.0 second absolutely rapid single target marksman attack interval. 
you can easily get him to 1.0. You know, people a little further on will get him to like 0.9 seconds. Get the guy popping off and just even taking one or two Aegis away, the shield buffs that uh, during phase two of the guild boss that he gets, it can be completely game changing. It's, it's going to be ridiculous. Lots of cool damage here, lots of cool stuff. I think he should be, you know, usable for a lot of things. He also has attacks that can ignore defense, right? So that's going to be really good, again, specifically for the second arm, but also just DPS in general in Guild Boss 2. Just really nice. You can get him ulting a lot. He gets this Rage Restoration. Great hero. Bursty damage, as they say. Most important to me is going to be that buff Dispel. And yeah, 4%, I know it's not a ton. Just get him going really quick. Pursuits are basically going to be every other hit when he's ulting. And then the really cool stuff. A1, this is nice. His pursuit, which is kind of like a big source of his damage. Damage is straight up 1.25x multiplier. Damage increase. But that A3, my god. So during the ultimate now, his pursuits, which again will be happening basically every other attack, will land stun, monstrous for the first arm, the death axe, saw axe, death blade, whatever they call it, deathy saw axe, that first phase of the guild boss too. You need those stuns. Every other pursuit's a guaranteed stun. You're gonna chip away. So now he's wearing a second hat, right? He's dismelling the bus, which is like a huge, crazy thing that not really anyone can do right now. He's doing that. And oh, look at this. He's also placing stuns, helping with the first arm of Guild Boss 2. But wait, there's more. What's that? These pursuits at A3 during the ultimate are also landing damage reduction, a 20% damage reduction. This is a pretty hard debuff to get. There are a couple ways. The main ways people are doing it right now are through Volca and through Alistair. Those will still be better options, but he's gonna be ulting all the time. You can time it out when you need it. This will be good for the entire fight. Any arm, doesn't matter. That boss hits hard. Getting damage reduction is enormous. So he goes from good damage, a little bit of true damage. So he's kind of wearing those hats, no pun intended, with his little cowboy. People are telling me he looks like Van Helsing. To me, he looked more like a Red Dead Redemption kind of guy, but I see both now. I looked up Van Helsing pictures. Sorry, I never saw the movie. Uh, so he's wearing that hat with the nice damage. He's wearing the very important hat with the buff dispel. Give him two more hats, why don't you? Amazing stuns, amazing damage reduction. This guy's an absolute prize. I will not stop pulling on that banner once I have Enora, even if I'm on a hot streak, even if I get Lucius early. I will not stop pulling until I get him A3. I really think that is my plan. Finally, we got Ares. We're gonna go really quick here. Uh, he's a tanky, tanky fighter. You can see super high HP for fighter. You know, not the highest. You've got people like Jira who's coming. You've got Abomination who's super high. But 28k is super duper high. The defense is low, but not that low for a fighter. But, you, you know, if you want to build him as a tank, it does make it kind of tricky. At least it's not basement levels. Uh, he's got that typical 2.6 second interval. All in all, it's solid here. Uh, he's got the two tiles of range, which is great for a ton of content. Uh, but specifically for boss content, and then again, talking about Guild Boss 2, because that's the main thing right now. Monstrous, monstrous defense break here. And this is on all basic attacks. 20% defense break, so kind of like a mini Torador thing going on here that I really like. Combine that with during his ultimate. Every hit, every instance of damage is going to have a 30% chance to place an enormous 30% increased physical damage taken, physical vulnerability that lasts four seconds. Build this guy nice and quick. He's not slow with the, the standard 2.6 second attack interval. He could be really cool. I think he put out a little damage himself. You know, these physical vulnerabilities are awesome. Uh, the defense break is awesome. I think he's gonna be a great like fourth unit in a nightmare team. And wouldn't you look at that, he even has a little stun. This is only when he's first deployed, but hey, just making him a little more relevant you know, for content where you need crowd control, and then again, the first arm in GB2. To be fair, it's only on the deploy, so you kind of would have to cycle him on and off the field. I don't see anyone doing that, but it's cool that it's there. I'll show you the awakenings really quickly. During the ultimate attack speed by 100, that's awesome. He's the kind of hero with that 30% chance, you know, to land the physical damage vulnerability. During the ultimate, you know, you want him going absolutely speedy. Little attack boost here. Now, during the ultimate, he's also gonna ignore defense. So that will help with his DPS in a pretty major way. And then the A5, whirlwind cut can be triggered on death. So now if he does die, like let's say you're on that first arm in Guild Boss 2, or if he dies in like an arena battle or something like that, he will land a five enemy stun and a nice chunk of damage and a pretty darn big 30% increased physical damage taken. He's People are saying he's like the L of the banner. They've compared him to Razok in previous banners or Ezrin. To me, he's better than those heroes, at least for where the game's at right now and the kind of people that are probably going to go nuts on this banner. Let's go really quickly now to our Ancients. I have to go over here to show you if we go to, where is it? Event notice? Is that where they're going to, no, it's going to be in game news. New hero info. All right, there we go. You merit. 
Guys, you merit. Really, really cool. He's got this skill over here, Ancient Blood. Increases team members' damage by 4%. This completely confirms he is this unnameable Lord Classification hero. Uh, he also is just like Ajax in that he's like got this ditto quality where he can fit in and get the faction boosts from any faction lord. So he can just kind of be in any comp and be an active member of that comp. Uh, he's got a lot of damage, physical and magic damage. He has freeze immunity. He can provide allies with freeze immunity. He can do freezes. He can do slows. He can do a ton of damage. He can hit both ground units and aerial units. He's got this effect over here, Winter's Bite, which is like his own super special crowd control. Reduces movement speed by 25%, stacks up to three times, so it can go up to 75%. When he reaches three stacks, you get a big freeze for two seconds. Just amazing stuff. He's, it's a lot of DPS, it's a lot of crowd control. This guy's gonna be an absolute menace in GVG. Probably a menace in Arena. He's only 20 costs as opposed to Ajax, the other unnameable, who I believe at base is 26. He's amazing. He's really amazing. I think there's a lot of people that are gonna be upset they don't get Valderon and they get him. And I think some of those people might be more excited they got him because he's the Looney Tunes. And for people that are gonna try to snag Nora, he's got a crazy bond skill with her. So obtain Nora, unlock the falling bonus effect. 20% chance to inflict an extra stack of Winter's Bite, so just you can get those max stacks faster. That means more intense slows more quickly. That means big freezes more quickly. And then also, when he receives fatal damage, he becomes this big dragon egg. If, after a certain amount of time, 20 seconds, they can't kill that egg, he just fully revives, completely ready to go. Like, you redeployed him and he's, he's cooking. Cool Awakenings, the one I want to focus on is the A2. This enhances his unnameable passive Lord effect. So instead of increases all team members damage, and this is on both lines, both team comps that you, you put together, uh, instead of the boost being 4%, it goes up an extra 2% to 6% total. Uh, having having a base copy and two extra copies, three total copies of your merit, not the worst thing in the world. Finally, Valderon. Oh, Valderon. I hate that the gallery's in the corner. Have I ever said that before? I hate that the gallery is in the corner. Valderon, I don't hate, though. I absolutely love him. Mr. P-Head over here, the tiniest head in the realm, or maybe just the biggest, most cavernous chest. Absolute goals. Uh, he's crazy. He is our second hero in the game after Yuridin that has Potent Surge. Basically, he has a normal, good ultimate, but if you let it load up a lot more, a full second charge, you get a crazy ultimate. Uh, and it is crazy. He does. He's kind of a one-man wrecking crew. He's a bit selfish, as we see from a lot of these ancient exclusive lords. But he still is an excellent lord choice. He's not as as good as a lord as Gone for his chaotic allies. But as a hero, he's an eliminate button. He's tanky as heck. He's strong as heck. He's deleted as heck. He's just good at everything. He's an absolute arena god. Truly an arena god. Getting down to 14 costs. Very few things in the in my gaming life would make me happier than pulling a Valderon. I think he looks unbelievably badass. I mean, just watch the cinematic as we wrap up here. It's a truly Looney Tunes weekend for us, guys. Uh, I'm excited. Can you tell? Are you guys excited? If you are, we're having three, potentially three different pulls parties. So that's how I wanted to end this. Uh, if you don't know, that's like where I do summons. Usually I finish with my own, but we always do a bunch of viewer summons. So on Friday, without question, we're going to be doing big pulls for the 2x by 15x. Lucius, Boreas, and Ares. And then on Saturday, we'll be doing the 15x on Ancient Summons for this beautiful guy here, Valderon. And you merit, you might have noticed I skipped Anora. If people want, and I'll have sign up for them so you can express what you want through signing up, we can do like an Anora only party on Thursday, or we can combine it and get a, like a little fun pity manipulation sesh as well on Friday and just do that with the 2x by 15x all together on Friday. I mean, regardless, we will do Anora summons on Friday. I'm on the fence if I want to do her on Thursday or Friday. I'm leaning towards Friday since I do have a lot of summons and I want to pity manipulate. You can see I got like 47k, 72 here. You guys let me know. You can let me know what you want to do in the comments. I'll have the sign up sheets pinned in the top pinned comment. So that's another way. Just sign up if you're interested. It'll be a lot of fun. I've been fastidious. I'm pumped. The game is piping hot. I'm in a good mood. Share with your mother and I'll see you real soon. Fast idiots.